Okay, folks, thanks. I'm glad to be back. Okay, here we go. Um, think of a word, any word. Well, not just any word. What I really want is a word that you might like to search for in papers past. Um, think about it now because I'm going to need a suggestion from you in a couple of minutes, okay? So, um, now, there's lots of more and more interesting cultural heritage data is becoming available for use. And this opens up all sorts of exciting possibilities for, for new types of research, uh, for finding patterns, for playing with scale, for unearthing connections. But do we have the skills necessary to undertake this research? You know, in discussions about the development of digital research skills, we tend to flop about between a couple of extremes. You know, at one end there's the, everybody should learn to code. Uh, and, and at the other end, there's the, uh, well, let's build shiny new tools so that people don't have to code. But what about that big space in between? The people who want to dig deeper than the shiny interfaces, to ask different types of questions, but don't want to start their explorations with a Programming 101 tutorial. Now, there are some great training opportunities out there. Uh, things like the Carpentries, and Jonas here from the Carpentries, and there's a, a presentation in the breakout space. Um, and I also frequently still dip into the, the Programming Historian, which offers a great set of tutorials. But having created and shared many examples, tools, workshops, data sets, and, and code repositories over the years, I still wonder how do we deliver what's needed when it's needed? When somebody realises that their research would be so much easier if they could get data out of Digital NZ, how can we share a live practical example of using the Digital NZ API? Well, you know, perhaps starting with something as simple as finding out how many items there are in Digital NZ. Or good fee. <laughs> Um, or perhaps, uh, going a step further, looking at the distribution of items in Digital NZ over time. Now, you've probably guessed that uh, this is no normal slideshow. It's real, live code running in a customised computing environment, all from within a normal old web browser. Let's have a little peek inside to see what's going on. It's really the combination of two particularly clever technologies. One is uh, Jupyter, and Jupyter provides the notebook interface that I'm working in, and enables you to combine text, live code, visualizations, HTML, pretty much anything. Um, and the other technology is a thing called Binder. Now, Binder takes a, a list of software requirements and, and spins up a, a virtual computer whenever you want it. Um, and you can just run your notebooks in that. So together you have the code and you have the environment to run it in. Now, you may have heard of these tools about Jupyter in the context of, of data science. Um, and they offer new possibilities for the reproducibility of research. Uh, you know, not just here's a link to my code and data, but here's a link to a live running version of my code where you can poke around in my data. But for those of us in the humanities, I think it offers some really exciting possibilities for shared collaborative exploration. Now, uh, a little while ago, when uh, I, uh, I, I saw the announcement about uh, Te Papa's collection API, um, I spent a few hours poking around inside because, you know, that's what I do on a weekend. Um, but what's different now is that um, I can document that poking around in a Jupyter notebook. That anyone can spin up, they can run it, they can copy it, they can edit it, they can extend it, they can build on it. So my silly farting about can become somebody else's starting point. And the thing that I really love about Jupyter is that it blurs the boundary between tools and tutorial. You can share real examples that do useful things, but leave open that possibility of going further. Let's have another little play. So, 
All I'm doing here is hitting shift enter, and that runs a code cell. I'm getting some data from digital NZ from a search for possum or opossum. Uh, we're finding out the titles where that appears, we're looking at the years, and we'll build ourselves a little visualization. That's all happening live, coming from digital NZ, being rendered in the notebook. Okay, but what if you're not really interested in feral Australians? Uh, <laughs> what if you'd like to search for something else? And now I need your word, quick. Cheese, cheese I heard. <laughs> Was it cheese? I don't know. That'll do. Okay. There's cheese. Okay. Guess what? I just edited some Python code. It's that easy. Jupyter lets you play around and gain confidence with gain confidence with code, not by undertaking a series of boring exercises, but just doing something that you're interested in that has an immediate payoff for you. And as your confidence grows, you can start start to ask different questions. Um, by just modifying this simple example, by editing another little bit, you could you could uh, search within a particular newspaper, or you could specify a particular decade. Um, and then if you end up finding something particularly interesting that you want to de uh, explore further, you could do something like this. So this is another notebook I created the other night which enables you to harvest large amounts of data out of Pavers past. Um, you just add in your API key, add in your search query, hit shift enter a few times and you end up with a nice CSV file that you can download and play with. All within your browser. Um, so this year I've been spending a lot of time making and sharing notebooks in my Glam workbench, which is really just a whole collection of GitHub repositories. Um, admittedly, it's a bit of a mess at the moment um, as I've just been throwing lots of stuff into it. And some notebooks are really just, are just dumps of useful code, while others do add a bit, more, a bit more context. But you know, it's okay, because after all, they're meant to be starting points, they're not meant to be finished products. Obviously, there's a fair bit of Trovi stuff in here, um, uh, but there's all sorts of other things as well. There's some material from the, uh, the, uh, Australian, uh, the, the National Archives of both Australia and New Zealand, um, and I've also just recently shared some examples that I developed with my students of using computer vision and facial detection on, on photographic collections. So you just dive in here whenever you see the uh, try, uh, launch binder button, you click on that, and it does its magic of loading up your customized computing environment ready for these uh, notebooks to run. And then you just start hitting shift enter, see what happens. No software to install, nothing to break. Just click, play, and most importantly, share. So we can all continue to learn together. Thanks very much. <laughs>